I'm Doug. And I'm Brooke. And today, we're going to talk about history and the fact that since the dawn of the incandescent light bulb, man has been striving to do more in more time in a very unnatural manner. We're going to go through what a circadian rhythm is. I still don't know that I know, but Brooke does. And we're going to talk about ways that you can bring your body back into a regular balance in a healthy way and feel better with the lowest amount of effort possible. First off, what is a circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythm is a 24-hour daily cycle, and it regulates our sleep patterns, our hormone production, our eating patterns, and even our body temperature. So we auto-regulate on a clock, and all of us are kind of universally the same? Yes, all humans are considered diurnal creatures. We're meant to be awake during the day and sleep at night. Uh, it's why I'm most alert at 10 a.m. and why my body wants me to go to bed at 9 p.m. I thought it was just because I was old and boring. That could partially be true, but mostly it's influenced by light and dark. Until this video, I was reasonably convinced that we were talking about bugs that only came around once every seven years. Every person that's watching this video is at some time or other being called on to perform at a very high level when the lights are down. When the sun's set, we can burn the midnight oil. That's where the, the phrase comes from, is that people are working well after what they originally intended to. What regulates that circadian rhythm? So there's a part of the hypothalamus that's connected to the optic chasm. It's going to directly get light and dark sensors, which is why it's really important from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. that you go out and you're in the sun. You see sunlight because that's your body's way of waking yourself up and having that circadian rhythm start the day. How does that affect guys that are on reverse cycles? Like if you're on a backward sleep cycle, like what are the negative effects of that? You kind of have to work against your odds because you're actually most productive as far as performance and strength during the day. That's how we're programmed to be. So you have to switch your cycle to then try and perform. And they call it shift lag, which is kind of like jet lag, but it can be really dangerous. So there's things you can do to support that. It is possible to shift your circadian rhythm so you're performing on a reverse cycle or not? Not totally, but you can definitely do things to support it. Like what kind of things? So things like eating within a 12 hour window. So starting your day with a good breakfast. Even if your day starts at like 5 p.m.? Right. So okay. even if you're doing the reverse. Okay. So let's say you start at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. So both the same people that start at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., we're going to treat them as if it's just reversed. Okay. Is this the healthiest thing? No. There's really negative long-term health effects. But if you try and maintain healthy patterns that are similar to someone who is waking up and having a regular day, you can actually kind of help negate some of those really awful side effects. What are those side effects? Well, long term, you can have increased risk of things like obesity, cardiovascular disease. There's even a correlation between depression and bipolar disorder. Um, we're talking about irregular heartbeat, blood pressure, things that are not great. I can't throw a rock into a pool full of dicks without having a bunch of dudes tell me that they will perform better on less sleep or that they're night owls. Well, I'm an anomaly. I'm just, I'm like, I don't, I don't need that sleep. Those people I would be led to believe are liars. Yes. You need seven to nine hours of sleep. That's what research shows. So even if that means you're sleeping during the day and you can support this by getting blackout curtains, it's better to sleep in a cool room, 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Still do those things, whether or not your sleep is during the day or at night, but you should be getting seven to nine hours. I know that every hour of sleep less than eight hours a day male gets is like a natural 15% drop in testosterone production. And you're going to have poor concentration, poor motor skills. Like if you're someone who's a shift worker and you need to be on and your body needs to be on, it's going to be really dangerous if not only is your sleep and wake cycle off, but then you're not sleeping the right amount of time. I'm the kind of guy that works better on two hours of sleep. I haven't heard anything that you had to say. How do I know that my circadian rhythms are off? You're going to have poor quality of sleep, difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep. You're not going to wake up feeling rested, poor concentration, memory. If your science is to be believed, melatonin is naturally secreted sometime around 9 p.m., naturally encouraging us to go to sleep at 9 p.m., 
And that melatonin production falls off, what, at like 7 a.m. ish, something around there. So, like, six. When the light starts. Yeah, light starts to come up and the melatonin stop, stops getting produced. So, like, natural sleep is, is not encouraged by the body hormonally anymore. Those hormones aren't being created during day sleep for like a, someone who's tired and sleeping during the day, which is one reason why it's like, well, I have a really hard time falling asleep. I get that. Do people have to exhaust themselves? Do they have to work so hard that they just, they fall, like basically falling asleep on their feet? Or are there ways to encourage a better sleep pattern to get into a healthier circadian rhythm? One of the big things is creating a good sleep environment. It's got to be quiet, dark, like really dark, blackout curtains dark, like cool temperature. Not a cool, big, red flashing alarm clock. That would be a no-go. Noted. Um, and then when that darkness, you will secrete melatonin. Okay. So you can almost kind of trick yourself by creating a really awesome sleep environment and then sticking to a schedule if you can. If you're not rotational shifts, try to go to bed at the same time. Even if that is 6 a.m., go to bed at 6 a.m. every day. Even if I'm not tired. Even if you're not tired. You need to have a routine to wind down and relax and then go into that sleep environment that you've created. So I like to work out and I got to get it in where I fit it in. And with kids and a crazy job and other responsibilities... I don't always have a regular training schedule. Does training hurt or help my circadian rhythm? It depends on the type and intensity of training and where you put it. So there is some research to support that moderate aerobic activity actually benefits your circadian rhythm. But you want to make sure that you're working out, especially if it's high intensity, at least three to four hours before bed because you want that time to unwind. Intense workout, the kind that I do because I hate myself. Is that going to affect my circadian rhythm? It can, depending on where you place it. So if you're someone who wants to burn it down doing a Metcon, it would be better to place that at the beginning of your day. And your day might be backwards, but the beginning of your day. I heard you talking about how nutrition, like how I'm eating, like when I'm eating specifically, it, it affects my circadian rhythms, like hormone secretion and stuff. Can you kind of explain that a little bit better to me? Yeah. So you want your eating patterns to line up in this 12 hour eating window. Some people consider that an intermittent fasting window, but really that should be just a normal eating pattern so that your breakfast and your dinner are at least 12, hour, or 12 hours apart or a little less. And then routinely eating like regular, like, you know, like five meals. Yeah. And if you're someone who works the night shift, eating small frequent meals is going to be better than eating one large meal that can make you feel lethargic and weigh you down and just too much food at once. Right on. And that also eliminates the need for me to be crushing like three monsters yeah, that's night. another thing. Caffeine is going to have a huge influence on your circadian rhythm. So let's say four to five hours before your shift ends, you're going to want to cut off caffeine. So it's okay to have caffeine the beginning of your day, even if you're a night shift worker, but cut that off four to five hours before your shift ends to then let the body wind down and try to have its own natural pattern. Can I jumpstart my circadian rhythm with like power naps or is that something that's completely unrelated? You can nap and it's not going to affect your circadian rhythm as long as you're taking short naps. Like think 20, 30 minute naps. My grandmother always said that nothing worth having came easy. My grandmother is basically full of shit. So I'm going to need you to tell me all the bullet points that make it easy for me to regulate my circadian rhythm in a more healthy way without having to change my lifestyle at all. You want to stick to a plan, have a solid wake up and bedtime. And you don't want that to vary on the weekends any more than an hour. Burning it down with my friends on a Friday night is frowned upon if I care about my sleep. Absolutely. For a hundred reasons before this and one more now. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, seven to nine hours a night. Make sure your naps are only 20 to 30 minutes if you decide to take them. Limit your caffeine after lunch. Boo. Or four to five hours before your shift is over. Okay. Daytime or nighttime workers. <laughs> I know. I'm a fun runner. You also want to make sure you have a nice sleep environment, cold, dark place, usually 68 to 70 degrees is like a perfect sleeping temperature. You also want to make sure that you're not stressed before bed. Calm. Nighttime routine, no stress, and get into some type of relaxation routine. So what you're saying is I shouldn't be picking fights with people about what the best president in American history is on the internet before I go to sleep? No, for multiple reasons. Electronics before bed should be avoided. Holding a bright light in your face does not help you prepare for sleep. Agree to disagree. All right. What about my friends that can go to sleep because of sheer willpower, 
but have trouble staying asleep and they wake up and they like they pee and they can't go back to sleep or they're restless in the middle of the night because they're hot and like turning. What's the deal with that? There can be a lot of reasons, but one of the big things is nutrition uh, deficiencies. If you have a vitamin D deficiency, you're going to have difficulty staying asleep. Okay. And vitamin D deficiency is actually really common in the United States. So a lot of people just aren't eating a nice wide variety of foods. It's also partially genetic. Women usually have lower vitamin D. So sometimes a vitamin D supplement, even once a week, can be beneficial. So that's why your doctor should test your levels when you're having difficulty sleeping. Now you have it, boys. Fill your old lady up with vitamin D. Brooke endorses it. <laughs> in another video, we talked about low-carbohydrate diets. And one of the things that can also lead to sleep troubles is eating a diet low in carbohydrates, low in calories. I've recently been convinced that a small bump of carbs right before bed is generally actually good for helping you fall asleep and stay asleep. Is that true? Well, there's and there's also this myth like don't eat carbs after six. Not true, especially since you usually work out in the evening. You should be eating carbs at that later meal because you need it post-workout for recovery. Now you know what circadian rhythms are and why yours is likely screwed up. Brooke has given you some ideas on how to improve your circadian rhythms, even if you have a job that isn't conducive to having a normal sleep cycle. I think the biggest thing to take away from all this is people get in their own heads and they can't sleep, so they say, I don't sleep, and then they deny themselves sleep and they stress about not sleeping, and it becomes this chicken or egg argument. So if you understand the basic cycles, as Brooke has kind of outlined it, um, I think it should be something that you can de-stress about, focus on, you know, regulating your breathing, calming down at night, having a dark sleep environment, and it'll bump you back into a more natural sleep pattern. You don't have to have screwed up sleep just because you've convinced yourself that that's how you function. Check out below for links to all the research articles, as well as a link to a podcast where we took a deep dive into sleep patterns, night shift work, and things you can do to support that. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell.